Separation from the world and devotion to God. Separation from the world and devotion to God. This teaching is also summed up in another single word. What? Called sanctification. But I don't want to use the word sanctification because by reason of use and abuse, it has acquired to some people some definite meanings that are not scriptural. Praise God. Sanctification simply means being set apart for holy use. Being set apart is the separation. The holy use is devotion or consecration. Why separation? Separation from the world and devotion to God. Why separation? You know, we live at the end of the end time. God is wrapping up his acts on this planet Earth. It is very clear from everything that we know, from everything that we are seeing in this world, that the close of the age is right here with us. The Bible says in the book of First Peter that someday in the future, scoffers will arise who will say, where is the promise of his coming? For since the death of the fathers, that is the church, apostles, the first apostles, that everything continues as it has always been. But the Bible said God prophesied their destruction before time. So I know that that prophecy is for somebody, but I pray that that person is not here. Praise God. That one day some people will begin to ask, where is the promise of his coming? That since they told us he's coming, we have not seen him. And that is the same thing that destroyed the people in the day of Noah. No, where is the rain you are telling us about? They waited a week, two weeks, one year, two years, three years, five years, 20 years, 50 years, 100 years, no rain. And they went back to their normal sinful lifestyle. And that day came upon them unawares. It shall not be our portion in Jesus' name. Why separation? Number one. God always commanded his children to be separate from other people on earth or other people of the world. God always commanded his children to be separate from other people of the world. God always commanded his children. When you come to a church like this, you must have your pen, you must have your paper, and you must have your Bible. We believe in opening the Bible and studying it. We believe in taking notes so that you can go back and make reference whether what you have been taught is actually scriptural. Praise God. That's the good thing about the Berean Christians. Alright. God always commands his children to be separate from other people of the world. First Kings Chapter 8, verse 53. But thou didst separate them from among all the people of the earth to be thine inheritance as thou speakest by the hand of Moses thy servant when thou broughtest our fathers out of Egypt, O Lord God. For thou didst separate them from among all the people of the earth to be thine inheritance as thou speakest by the hand of Moses thy servant, when thou broughtest our fathers out of Egypt, O Lord God. In the book of 2 Corinthians, where we read, chapter 6, verse 17 and 18, Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, say the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and I will receive you. 
And I will be a father unto you, and you shall be my sons and daughters, saith the Lord Almighty. God is, was in the first place, he was speaking to the Jews. The Bible said that God separated them from among all the people of the earth. Did God create all the other people? Yes, he did. But God chose for himself a people. And from the time he chose them, he wanted them to be separate and distinct from other people of the earth. He didn't want them to be mixed up. He didn't want a situation where he would be saying, uh, where are the Israelites? Is it this one or this one? No. He wanted them separate. He wanted them distinct. He wanted them unique. He wanted them a peculiar people. That has always been his pattern from the beginning. When man failed in the days of Adam and in the days of Noah, he took a man by the name Abraham and he told him to separate from his family. Excuse me, what God wanted to do with Abraham, he could have done it right there. God owns everywhere. But he wanted to separate him from his people. He wanted the generation that will come from Abraham to be distinct, different, separate from every other group of people on the planet Earth. And that has been the major problem between God and Israel. Every time you saw God punish them, it was because they began to associate too closely with the people of other nations and began to imitate them and began to do those things that those nations were doing. But why would this God destroy the people that he created, he himself created? Seven nations of them removed them completely and planted Israel because he, he wanted a people that are unique, separate for himself. Different from other people that he himself created. Think about it. That God chose you is a privilege. The Bible says that our salvation was decided from before the foundation of the earth. We were chosen from before the foundation of the earth. That is Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. So we see in the book of Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 to 3. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee from thy country, out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee. And I will make of thee a great nation. In other words, Abraham, what I want to do with you will not start until you move from your father's house, until you move from your kindred, until you move from your country. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. Verse 3. And I will bless them that bless thee and curse him that curseth thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. What happened in verse 4? So, Abraham departed as the Lord had spoken unto him. And Lot went with him. And that Lot was to give him a lot of trouble in future. The only thing that he collected with him, only person that he didn't separate with, when he was carrying out that instruction, that Lot later gave him a lot of problem. Praise God. Why separation? Number two. There is no point of agreement between the kingdom of God and the worldly system of Satan. There is no point of agreement between the kingdom of God and the worldly system of Satan. There is no point of agreement between the kingdom of God and the worldly system of Satan. You can't say this is where they agree. They, 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 they don't agree in this area. They don't agree in this area, but they agree here. You can't find one place in the Bible where the kingdom of God agrees with the system of this world. The Bible says the road that leads to life is a narrow road. And the very few find it. He said the one that leads to destruction is a very wide road. It has always been opposite. Opposite. There is no point of agreement. In 2 Corinthians chapter 6, where we read, 2 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 14 to 16. 2 Corinthians 6, verse 14 to 16. He said, Be ye not unequally yoked together with unbelievers. For what fellowship 
has righteousness with unrighteousness. And what communion has light with darkness. And what covenant has Christ with Satan? And what part has he that believeth with an infidel? And what agreement had the temple of God with idols? Please answer those questions. Answer now. Answer. Let me take the questions one by one. He said, For what fellowship has righteousness with unrighteousness? Answer me. That is, you are claiming to be righteous. And your best and closest friends are sinners, people who are not born again. Not that you are reaching out to them to preach the gospel to them. Not that you are conversing with them about the, the danger that is coming to their soul. But you, the, the, the people you sit and chat with all the time are sinners and unbelievers. I'm telling you that anybody who is into such cannot be a good Christian. Go and look around. Anybody who claims to be a Christian and all his best friends that surround him are unbelievers. Watch the person is a compromiser. Watch the person he can't be a good example of Christianity. He said, what communion has light with darkness? Please answer. Because God is the one asking you the question. So light and darkness cannot meet. And they, they are in agreement. So why are you trying to, to compromise with the system of this world? Why are you trying to belong to the system of this world? And also belong to the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, what covenant has Christ with Satan? Can you answer? And so why are you marrying an unbeliever? Somebody who is not born again. Or what part had he that believed with an unbeliever with an infidel it's in the bible what part has he that believeth with an unbeliever can you begin about the jibu on gada neba na atanu na crack moral jokes have we had a one of cigar no no you want to go at your back face me i face you It's a terrible thing that Christianity has come to a level in this generation where you can no longer distinguish a Christian and a non-believer. There is a very earnest satanic attempt to marry the church with the world. To marry the body of Christ with the people of this world. To unite them. is even going on one world religion. There's one they call Unifate. And they have even started Chrislam. Christianity plus Islam. Chrislam. What they didn't know is that in every major between the world and the church, the world will win. That word, Christianity and Islam. Islam is the one, only one that is rendered fully. Christlam. You find the word Islam complete. But Christians cut the name of Christ. Even the name of their Savior, they cut it half. The people you are dealing with are more crafty than you. Every attempt, there is no point of agreement between the kingdom of God and the worldly system of Satan. And every attempt to create one incurs the wrath of God. 
every attempt to create that agreement always incurred the wrath of God. All through the Bible, from the days of the children of Israel till now, every attempt to create a compromise, to create a meeting point between the kingdom of God and the kingdom of this world and the people of this world, it always ended in wrath, anger, punishment from God. They wanted to curse Israel. That was Balak. He hired Balaam to curse Israel. Tried three times. He couldn't walk. Balaam said, I have an advice to give to you. I have um, followed their religion before. I backslid. I couldn't continue. So I began to use sorcery and enchantments. Let me give you advice. Organize parties and invite them. Let your women be naked and seduce them. Tell them we are one. There is no need for separation. And you will see what will happen. Balak did it. Within one day, 23,000 Israelis died. But the Moabites, not one died. The Moabites, not one died. Every time there is a matter between the people of God and the people of this world, the people of God will always lose. I've showed you an example of Chrislam. What are the areas of separation from the world? What are the areas of separation from the world? What are the vital areas of separation from the world? Number one is genuine repentance and separation from the sinful practices of this world. Genuine repentance and separation from the sinful practices of this world. Genuine repentance and separation from the sinful practices of this world. Galatians 5 from verse 19. Genuine repentance and separation from the sinful practices of this world. Galatians chapter 5 from verse 19. Galatians 5 from verse 19. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these adultery, fornication, uncleanness, unclean jokes, immoral jokes, lasciviousness. What is lasciviousness? Lasciviousness is doing everything connected with sexual immorality without carrying out the sex itself. Lasciviousness. You see a lady bring out her tongue and snap herself, selfie, and post on the internet. What is this suggesting? Lasciviousness is inviting you to think of immorality. It's, it wants to draw your mind to something. Praise God. Lasciviousness. Idolatry. Witchcraft. Hatred. Variance. That is erotu. Emulations. That is jealousy. Rot. Strife. Seditions. Heresies, envies, murders, drunkenness, revelings. That is wild dancing, wild canal dancing. It's a good thing. All these uh, worldly musicians. What are their names now? The current ones. I don't even know their names. Praise God. When we got born again, one of the first things we will do is to gather all the tapes of worldly music in your house and burn it. Go and ask anybody that had genuine repentance in the 70s. Those things in your house are the reason your Christian life has been like this. What thing now have you been able to do in the church and do it well? 
Let's start from there. What, what job has been committed into your house and hand in the church that you have done well since you got born again? For how many years now? And yet people who got born again yesterday are carrying out as if they have been born again 20 years ago because separation will always attract the spirit of God that will bring about maturity. Lack of separation is the reason for continuing to be a baby canal from year to year. Genuine repentance from the sinful practices of this world. Envies, verse 21, murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, of which they I tell you before, as I have told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. This place has not been removed from the Bible. Those who practice such things will not enter heaven. You can hold a position in the church. You can even be a pastor or a pastor's wife. You can be a bishop. You can be anybody. You can pastor one of the biggest churches. Who cares? But this scripture has not changed. The Bible says those who do those things will not inherit the kingdom of God. Don't let people intimidate you with maybe their wealth, achievement, or position, or whatever they... Some started well. Moses couldn't enter the promised land. Go and check what God did with Moses. And you think if he, if he didn't spare Moses, he would spare anybody in this generation. Because he answers a big title. And pastors a big church. When there is false repentance, st sin still looks attractive. When there is false repentance, now remember number one is genuine repentance and separation from sinful practices of this world. So there is genuine repentance and there is false repentance. How do you know whether a, genuine, a repentance is genuine? How do you know whether a repentance is false? When a repentance is false, sin still looks attractive. In other words, the person stopped fornicating. But he's, he's, anytime he sees opportunity to fornicate, he says, ah, look at what I'm missing. If just that I just gave my life to Christ. Look at what I've been missing. Praise God. The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 1 verse 9, you know, when the person sees alcohol and they open the beer bottle, boom, and the smoke will come out, he perceives the order. He says, look at what I've been missing. This Christianity is difficult. Hebrews 1 verse 9. Thou hast loved righteousness and hated iniquity. Hated iniquity. Hated iniquity. Hated iniquity. Therefore God, even thy God, has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above your fellows. May God anoint you today. I say may God anoint somebody that is ready to separate today. May God lift you far above your mates in the name of Jesus. He said the Lord, even thy God has anointed thee with the oil of gladness above thy fellows. Above thy fellows. There is a difference between separating from iniquity and hating iniquity. When there is a genuine repentance, when you see fornication, opportunity to fornicate what enters your mind is hey so but but this thing is so terrible i couldn't imagine that i was doing it before this this kind of thing how how is it that i was even involved in it something that is bad like this how come that i i even got involved with such a thing that is the mentality of somebody who has been genuinely repented. But when repentance is not genuine, they, they, there is no change of heart. There is no corresponding change in attitude. It, it is just being forced. When the opportunities are ripe and there is nobody around, it, it will still happen. 
But when there is genuine repentance, somebody can do anything. People have placed oaths on themselves. If I commit fornication, let me die. This thing that is so bad like this, why was, what was I even enjoying there? But every time, you still flex. You cut your clothes halfway. Men are smiling at you, your legs. And you, you just be doing your bottom like this. And you, you are still enjoying it. Sorry, you are not a Christian. Let nobody deceive you. My job is to tell you the whole truth. So that your blood will not be in my hand. You are not a Christian. You are not born again. The only thing is that you have a desire to become one, but you have not actually become one. You need to go back to the cross, give your life to Christ, and ask God to sanctify you. To remove that desire for ungodliness. Other people are getting bribes, you know, getting some things through bribe, polluting themselves, and you are there thinking of what you missed. By not giving bribe. Excuse me, what you missed. By not giving bribe. What you missed. Child. We live in a very terrible time. When many people think they are Christians, but they are not Christians. Do you know that anything you get from, by sin will destroy something in your destiny? The if God wants to give you this thing, he cannot give it to you through sin. He will make a way for you to have this thing in righteousness. If you cannot get it by righteousness, it was not part of God's plan for your life. And getting it will scatter something in your life. But you may not understand. Adam and Eve they succeeded in getting what was not God's plan to give them and they scattered their destiny. Many people's lives have been scattered by one thing or the other they got through crookedness but they didn't know where their problem started from. Separation from the world and devotion to God. It has come to a point. It has come to a point where those who want to be a, be Christians will become Christians, and those who don't want to be Christians, they should tell themselves the truth: I am not yet a Christian, but I want to be one. I'm still on that number one. Be part of it. How do you know false repentance? There is great unwillingness to separate from objects of sin and former partners in sin. There is a great unwillingness to separate from former objects of sin and partners in sin. In other words, the person is born again, but he doesn't want to throw away the, the carton of beer in the house. One day I, I might need it. One day, one day, one day. And that day is when the Spirit of God departs from you. It will never happen to you in Jesus' name. When there is false repentance, there is great unwillingness to separate from former partners in sin. The girlfriend that you used to go to bed with and you didn't pay bride price, you are not married. You just uh, nah, I'm born again. No. <laughs> Um, I've joined church. Just in, uh, follow me to church. Let's go. And the girl will say, why? Well, wonderful. Let's go to church. And you, two of you will come to church. And you continue from there. Praise God. There's great unwillingness to separate. When we got born again, there were some relationships that we didn't like. We had to address it square. Sister, I'm now born again. I want you to give your life to Christ. I've separated from every, this is the end of this relationship. Praise God. Yes. 
We did it. This is the end of this relationship. And it ended that day. You are still receiving text messages, receiving calls, exchanging birthday nonsense. It is a tragedy waiting to happen. When there is false repentance, there is great unwillingness to separate from former objects of sin and former partners in sin. Consider Lord's wife. Come out of Sodom. She was joining her husband to run out of Sodom. But Sodom was still inside her. At the time she couldn't bear it. She had to turn. Ah, look at all my everything in Sodom. All the things we used to enjoy. The party. The egu egu wine. So uh, 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 all of them will now go. She became a pillar of salt. Unwillingness to separate from former partners in sin is a sign that you are not truly born again. And you will need to go to the cross and ask God to give you real salvation and sanctify you today. I pray that you will make it in Jesus' name. Number two, what are the areas of separation? Number two, separation from worldly ambitions and selfish motives. Separation from worldly ambitions and selfish motives. Separation from worldly ambitions and selfish motives. Ambition is different from vision. Vision is what God wants you to do with your life. And that one, you receive it from God. You're on your knees praying, Oh Lord, what do you want me to do? Now that I've finished university, Oh God, what do you want me to do? Now that I'm through with secondary school and my parents said there is no money to train me in the university, Lord, what do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? What do you want me to do? Ambition is what you had always wanted. What your flesh wants. Without consideration to what God wants. What do you like to do when you grow up? 80% of those answers are ambition. Praise God. You can sin to achieve your ambition. But you cannot sin to achieve vision. No. It will scatter the vision. You can sin and achieve your ambition. Because it is what your flesh wants. And the flesh and sin, they work together. But bring in sin into God's vision, God's plan, you scatter it. Anything that you cannot get by righteousness is not part of God's vision. A lot of Christians, a lot of people who call themselves Christians, are running their lives based on ambition. Not a desire to please God with their lives. And it's a sign of false repentance. The areas of separation include separation from worldly ambitions and selfish motives. Mark 10, Mark chapter 10, 21 to 22. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatever thou hast, and give to the poor and thou shalt have treasure in heaven and come, take off the cross and follow me. Woo! I found a zealous young man who wants to serve God. I found a zealous young man who wants to know how he can please God more. This young man has not been fornicating. He has been obeying all the commandments. Now, young man, I'll, I'll make something great out of you. I have a plan for your life. And that plan will now start manifesting. Go and sell everything that you have. And give to the poor. Come, take up your cross and follow me. That was the end of the man. Ambition killed his Christianity. Carnal ambition killed his Christianity. What have you been trying to achieve that has been making you sin? 
that has been making you tell lies, give bribes, compromise here and there, it is ambition. It is not the plan of God for your life. A sister came for prayers and she was very frank. She's still in this church. That all the time she applied for a job, she has always reduced her age because her age had actually advanced. It was above the requirement. So they always advised her to reduce her age. And immediately she heard that she reduced it. And she kept losing. But one day she came to church and she heard a message like this. And she vowed never to reduce her age again. She wrote her correct age for the first time. And she got that job that first time. If it is God's plan for your life, no matter how impossible the situation looks, God will give it to you. And I'm decreeing for somebody that which God has planned for you, that blessing, that breakthrough, no matter the oppositions, no matter the corruption of this generation, that blessing is released to you now. In the name of Jesus. She came, she told me, that she has been writing the wrong age. I said, write the right age. Let's pray together. Sister, you get the job. Has our God stopped working miracles? Praise God. Tell your neighbor, say, tell the truth. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. That's Christianity. Tell the truth. Help me turn to another person. Say, tell the truth, no matter the cost. Tell the truth, no matter what it costs you. That is Christianity. What are the results of separation from the world? Number one, the first part is why separation? Why must we separate? Number second part is areas where we need to separate. And the last part is results of separate, separation. When we separate from the world, what, what is the result? Number one, devotion to God devotion to God. There is not one single person that is not separated from the world that can be devoted to God. Now that you have been consulting with unbelievers, anyhow, chatting with them on social media about irrelevant things, you are in every birthday party. Now that you are, you are still doing some of those evil things that you did together with them. Check your devotion to God. Has your devotion to God improved? Check. Will I, let's, stop, let's stop this game of trying to deceive ourselves. Look around the church. Look at the people who are committed. The people you can place a work in their hand and they will do it well. They are the same people that are separated from the world. Look around. The same people that are not separated put something in their hand. They will make a clumsy mess out of it. Because their heart is somewhere else. Where your heart is, there your treasure will be. Nobody can be in affinity with the world and still be devoted to God. Second Timothy chapter 2 verse 4. No man that wore it entangled himself with the affairs of this world that he may please him who have chosen him to be a soldier. There's nobody that is a soldier. He said, No man that wore it entangled himself with the affairs of this world. Why? So that he can please the one that has chosen him to be a soldier. So, if you are entangled in the affairs of this world, you can never please God. Pure he did. Tell me any soldier you know that has a shop at a coca. Hmm? Uh, captain in the army. Lieutenant Colonel. In the morning, he will come and open the shop. Teacher chain, Desi Chetins. Then, see, then I saw you have your own and 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 I saw you have your
Me and Aganata in the evening so that he will come and take uh, account. Any soldier you know, if the system of this world can demand so much from their soldiers who will perish, how much more God? He said, no man that worried entangled himself with the affairs of this world, with the wild partying of this world, with all those celebrations. I'm surprised that people who, are, who claim to be born again still go to watch masquerades. Those are the same things that killed the first and the second church. And some people came out and said, we have decided to obey the word of God. We are going to heaven. Alas! Let us learn from history. Masquerade in the church. How did it start? It started by you going there to watch it. Praise God. Luke chapter 16 verse 13. No servant can serve two masters. For he will, for either he will hate the one and love the other. Or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and mammon. You cannot serve God and the world. You can't be a friend of God and be a friend of the world. First John chapter 2 verse 15. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the latest fashion, the pride of life, class systems, is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lost thereof. But he that dwelleth dwell the will of God abideth forever. Today we are talking about sanctification. Sanctification. You find it so many times in the Bible, so many places. And it actually is talking about being set apart for God's use. And there is no way. God can begin to use you until he sets you apart. All the people that God ever used, he set them apart. Beginning from Abraham to Moses, all of them, they were set apart. They were not living their lives the way unbelievers were living their lives. So if you are asking why God is not using you, it is, the answer is very clear. Because you need to set yourself apart. Abraham set himself apart. In James chapter 2 verse 23. And the scripture was fulfilled. Which said Abraham believed God. Abraham believed God. And it was imputed to him for righteousness. And he was called the friend of God. He was called the friend of God. He started with separation. In Genesis chapter 12 verse 1 to 4. In Genesis 12 1 to 4. Abraham separated. In James chapter 2, verse 23, the Bible called him friend of God. And the place where we read in 1 John tells us, you cannot be a friend of God and be a friend of the world at the same time. Finally, number two, what are the results of separation? God will not spill you out of his mouth. The result of separation is that God will not spew you. He will not vomit you out of his mouth. Revelation chapter 3 verse 15 and 16. I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou art cold or hot. I wish you are a sinner and a thorough sinner or you are a Christian and a thorough Christian this kind of hybrid this kind of uh, major they, uh, he said because you are not hot and you are not cold that's the next verse I will out of my mouth I wish that you will choose one 
be a sinner and a lousy sinner or be a Christian and a good Christian but a Christian and a sinner at the same time is I will vomit you out of my mouth it will never be our portion in Jesus name God hates hypocrisy Matthew 10 37 to 38 God always hated hypocrisy not here nor there people who can stand out publicly for Christ and make a stand and refuse to compromise with the system of the world hypocrites there are many churches they dance more than everybody they sing more than everybody but when it is time to go out of the church and take a public stand for Christ a stand against sin a stand against evil you will not see them Matthew 10 37 and 38 he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me that is if your father can tell you to stop being a Christian and you agree you were not a Christian before your mother told you to stop being a Christian and you agreed you were not born again before your husband said you will not be born again you will not carry Bible again in my house and you agreed you think you backslid no you were not a Christian before that time if you were a genuine Christian before that time there is something in you that will not accept that people have died because of Christianity cut my throat if that is the only solution but deny this Bible stop serving God stop going to church never they are still dying for their sake for the, for the sake of their faith he that loveth father or mother more than me is not worthy of me and he that loveth son or daughter more than me is nobody. All this my husband told me to stop coming to church. You are, you are deceiving yourself. You were not born again before. Yes. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. What is taking up your cross? Being ready to die. Being ready to be crucified the way Jesus was crucified. When he carried his cross on the way to Golgotha, he had a choice to say all these things. I recant what I said. I don't say again. Please forgive me. And if he wished, he could have got away. But that he carried his cross to the Calvary was he was determined to pay whatever price that needed to be paid to do the will of God. So when God said you take up your cross, it means you are ready to die for it. God hates hypocrisy. Luke 6 verse 26. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. Now your own Christianity can like it. Baby. Those uh, ages. Those ages. Those ages. Those ages. Or your own type. But your sister is usually sitting on a J church. Even though you peck it, you can even count me. You even don't join and peck it, okay? Bible said, Well, woe unto you when all men speak well of you. It is your own Christianity we like. Eh? Oga, okay. we like your own. This uh, beer. And this, some people say that uh, oh, this beer. The Bible says we shouldn't drink too much. Uh, stay around so that we can talk and gist. After all, Jesus was, was living among sinners. He was even sinner himself. Let's be chatting together. I beg, take one bottle, Jare. It's your own type of Christianity. I like. The Bible said, Woe unto you when all men speak well of you. 
For so did their fathers to the false prophets. Every genuine Christian must be persecuted. The Bible said, Yea, all that must live a godly life in Christ Jesus must suffer persecution. Please go and tear it from your Bible. If, you, if it's still there in the Bible, if you are not being persecuted, there is something wrong with your life. I'm not saying you should go and ask for persecution, but when you begin to practice these things, people will speak negatively about you. They will say some, some, some uncharitable things. But the problem is that you want, you say, yeah, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. Church, please stand up. Take, open your Bible. Open to that place. Second Timothy 3 verse 12. If you can't find it, you can read from the script screen. Let's read together. One to go. Yeah. And all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer. You didn't say may. Not even will. Shall is a compulsory word. The, this Bible, I know about the history of this Bible. It, when it was when they finished writing, they gave to theologians, they, reviewed, they gave to literary artists, people who understand genealogy of words. They examined it. They gave to lawyers because it's a book of the law, so that they will check the legal implication of every word. Let's read again. One to go, yeah, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus. Shall suffer persecution. So, why do you want to please everybody? It is because you are already backsliding. It will not be our portion. It will not be our portion. Finally, let's read Exodus 33, 32, verse 26. Exodus 32, verse 26. Exodus 32. You can read from the screen for want of time. Let's read together. I want to go. Then Moses stood in the gate of the camp and said, Who is on the Lord's side? Let him come unto me. And all the sons of Levi gathered themselves unto him. That was how the sons of Levi became the priestly family. From there, you also have the priests. Who is on the Lord's side this morning? That is the question God is asking. Who is on the Lord's side? Who is going to take a stand against the compromises and the wickedness of this world? A revival is coming. The last revival will rock this earth. God is selecting his people. He said, many are called, but few are chosen. Before the rapture, messages like this will be offered in some places where the Spirit of God is working to prepare the bride. If you are not separated before the divine separation comes, you will be left behind. So God wants to separate his people before the trumpet. So that they will not be left behind. Lift your hands to heaven. Begin to thank God for the word you have heard. Take your stand. Because you are not cold or not hot, I'm going to spew you out of the mouth. Take your stand. Lord, I have decided to practice genuine Christianity. Help me. Help me. I have decided. To practice genuine Christianity. Lord, help me. I have decided to go all the way. I have decided to burn the bridge behind me. I have decided to throw away everything that connects me with sin. You're here and you want to give your life to Christ. You are not born again. You want to give your life to Christ. 
Or you were born again, but somehow, because of these things we are talking about, you backslid and you want to rededicate your life. You have seen some of the things mentioned. Ungodly friendship, ungodly dancing, so many things. Exam practice, cheating, lying, bribery, all those things. And you say, God, I want to rededicate myself. I don't want to deceive myself. I don't want to end up in hell. If I have left so many things to practice this Christianity, I must do it well. You want to rededicate your life to Christ? Lift your hand. If I see your hand, I'm going to pray with you. That's right. That's honesty. That's sincerity. Put that hand to your chest and pray this prayer. Say in the name of Jesus, Lord Jesus, I rededicate my life to you. Please come afresh and dwell in me. Be my savior. Be my Lord. Oh God, today I take my stand publicly to be your child. I take my stand against the corruptions of this sinful world in the name of Jesus. Father, in Jesus' name, I thank you for these ones. I ask that you forgive their sins. Let their names be written afresh in your book of life. And let all the charges against them be cancelled by the blood of Jesus Christ. Give them the grace to serve you in spirit and in truth. Thank you, blessed Lord. In Jesus' mighty name. Join us every Sunday. We have two power pass services. First service starts 7.30 a.m. in the morning. Second service starts 9.30 a.m. Every Wednesday we have Maybrook service. School of Success. And it starts 4.30 p.m. Every Saturday we have a non-denominational service. People come from different churches. Pastors come from different denominations. And the time is 7.30 a.m. in the morning. As you come, remember that a miracle is waiting for you. The venue is Raya Priesthood Church Cathedral beside Public Boho Umike by UBA Uwaji of Zik Avenue, Oka, Anambra State, Nigeria. You can follow us on Facebook. You can follow us on Instagram. You can follow us on Twitter handle and watch Pastor Wisdom Onyebuchi's messages live on YouTube. For more inquiries, you can call 081 4006 7698 081-4006-7698 Or you can call 081-3585-4764 081-3585-4764 Join us same time, same station next week. God bless you.